I was at the ARIA summit this week. Lots of really cool work. But it did make me think, like, it's going to take us, like, 30 years before we can look and say whether this succeeded or not. Yeah. And I feel that this is true of almost all of the money that we spend on research. There are definitely some research and development bets that are really long term. Like you say, the kind of mRNA vaccine work. You start work in, I don't know, 1980, yeah. and it yields the benefits in 2020 when there's a COVID pandemic. But when I look at the stuff that we fund, there is some stuff that generates results quite quickly. I mean, not of the scale of saving the world from a deadly pandemic, but stuff that's genuinely really useful. project that we've been running is basically an economic project to kind of work out what's going on with people who run businesses. It turned out that was really useful immediately mm. post-pandemic because they were the people who did all these really detailed surveys on working from home. So there's definitely some stuff that, that, that has a quicker return and you see the benefits more incrementally. But I agree, there's a real challenge. About how do you measure these really big long-term bets? If you pay $20,000 for a van, that kind of capital is pretty homogeneous in its value. R&D assets, intuitively, you think they're going to be much more heterogeneous, they're going to be much more random. So I guess what that means is if you've got a choice between optimising on two dimensions, increasing the quantity and increasing the quality, if you think that funding science in a better way will make you more likely to get those home runs, then maybe you want to focus more on optimising the quality rather than optimising the quantity.